What's up everyone, I'm Callum on Toast, and in today's video I'm going to be showcasing some battles in the Spring Cup, and I'll be completely honest, this meta is already very boring, but I don't quite have enough Stardust to build the Ultra League team that I want to showcase, so this will have to do for now. I've decided to revisit a team that I ran last time we had this cup with the three most attack weighted Pokemon available in Kartana, Shadow Sharpedo and Shadow Cacturn. And Shadow Cacturn has actually had several move updates since then, gaining access to Trailblaze and Sand Attack. This team does rely on a lot of fast move pressure which will seem a bit hypocritical of me given that I've been calling out other YouTubers for promoting toxic teams recently, but I can assure you nobody else is going to run this team. All we have to do is look at the PV poke ratings up against the meta to realise just how bad this team is, but despite that I was still able to pick up some crazy wins. So with that being said, let's just get into the question of the day. If you could update any glass cannons moveset, which Pokemon would you choose and which move would you give them to improve their gameplay? Let me know in the comment section down below and with that being said, let's get into the battles now. Alright, so going into the first battle, lead Shadow Sharpedo into a purified Whiskash. Of course, got two grass types in the back. So I say swap into my Cacto, and my opponent is incredibly slow to react. We're going straight for the Dynamic Punch here. The opponent is going to no shield. We one shot the Abomber Snow. And the opponent is going to just concede the match there. And Shadow Cacto able to take out the Abomber Snow and just completely ruin the opponent's day. And they just concede that. So GG's to that opponent there. Into the next game, we see a lot of Ninetales. Luckily for me, they're not running Charm. The opponent is just gonna fire for charge if this was not enough for a dazzling gleam so i will resist either a weather ball or a side shock and i'm actually able to make it to a poison fang now poison fang of course is gonna hit for super effective damage i don't want to really i don't really want to give them too much extra energy i'm hoping because i swap out i can make it to the full razor leaf farm down before they make it to another two weather balls but unfortunately that is not the case so i'm gonna double shield my kartana the opponent's gonna come in with a shadow venusaur now of course night sash isn't gonna hit that hard but i could be running aerially so i might grab a shield here. Nice Ash does grab the final shield from the opponent, but they will be able to take me out here, even with a Frenzy Plant, which is double resisted, which is insane. We are now going to wait out our Switch Clock here. Going to come in with my Shadow Cacturn. I should pace at the same time as the next charge move, but I'm going to swap. I'm going to make a catch onto my Shadow Sharpedo. That Sludge Bomb will be taken out of the Sharpedo. I'm going to overfarm here, and the opponent swaps into a Zoom Reel. We can go for a Trailblaze here. Trailblaze is going to hit for super effective damage. Ramp up my attack. I'm assuming they're probably running Ice Beam, so I throw just just before they get there. I'm hoping I've still got enough residual energy to make it to a charge move up against the Venusaur. And can we get there in time? Yes, we're able to get there on the CMP tie. And a Trailblaze is double resisted as well, but it easily takes out the Venusaur from this range, and I'm able to take that game. So GG's to the opponent there. Into the next game, we see Atropius in the lead, so this is absolutely awful for me. They are running Air Slash, and you can see these bites are actually chunking quite a bit. We are pacing about the same in terms of fast move pressure, so I'm going to shield up the Leaf Blade. The opponent's going to swap into a Lapras, and now, unfortunately, this is still not looking good. They will be able to make it to an Ice Beam before I can get the full Razor Leaf Farm down. So I shield that up. I'm now down both shields. The opponent can just come back in with their Tropius. I'm going to go for a Night Slash here. Probably going to grab a shield, and then they will be able to fully Air Slash farm me all the way down as well these razor leaves are double resisted i'm adding basically no fast move pressure whatsoever i'm hoping the opponent will just blind throw into my pokemon that i bring in so i come in with the cacto and hoping it is just a blind leaf blade but no it's the airy lace it nearly one shots me we swap into our sharpedo they come in with a wall rain i'm just gonna full send the crunch here crunch it's gonna be no shielded that nearly ko's they do get the powder snow farm down but i'm able to stand attack farm them down but the opponent can get the air slash farm down that was a very hectic end game there but ggs to that opponent looked like it was lost completely when i saw the tropius in the lead but we made it incredibly close but into the next battle we're going to see a empoleon in the lead they're going to swap out there as they bank a charge move into their tentacle i think i'm just going to shield this anyways play it safe and the opponent is going to go for an acid spray so unfortunately that would not do much damage there i would have probably actually been able to no shield that and farm them down but anyways we've used our shield now not a lot we can do about it the opponent's going to come back in with the empoleon i'm going to go for the knight's ash here expecting to grab a shield anyways going for a boost unfortunately we don't get it but the opponent doesn't commit to the full farm down there they go for the drill peg i can come in with my sharpedo the opponent's going to come in with a galarian wheezing so i'm just going to go straight for the poison fang here poison fang grabs the final shield from the opponent and whilst i've only got resisted charge moves to throw these sand attacks are actually chunking a fair bit now that i have debuffed their attack and these are also non-stab sand attacks here i realize this is just going to be another brutal swing we will live that although not that comfortably if i'm going to be completely honest i'm now going to go for a trailblaze trailblaze will be taken out the wheezing and the opponent's actually going to be able to fully steel wing farm me down but i can just farm them down with one bite up against the apoleon and i'm able to take that game 
So GG's to opponent there. Into the next game, we see a Bomber Snow in the lead. And if they are running Powder Snow, then this is actually a kind of positive matchup for us. It kind of depends if they bait or not. So I'm going to show this up anyways. They did farm to the energy ball. It is the energy ball. So now we can just fully buy it, farm them all the way down before they make it to another charge move. And they're going to come in with a lantern. Now I'm expecting it might be something like a ferrothorn in the back, but no, it's a tentacle. So I probably should have just let the Sharpedo go down there. That way I could have lined my Kartana to the tentacle and got my Cacturn up against the lantern. But unfortunately, I think I've just thrown away this game here. So we're going to come back in with the Sharpedo. I'm hoping I can force the opponent to throw their energy, but no, they're going to commit to a full poison jab farm down. They've got so much loaded energy. I have to just let this go through. The opponent's going to go for an acid spray. Doesn't do much damage. It will double debuff my defense. Going to let the next one go through as well. And it's another acid spray quad debuff to my defense. They come back in with the lantern and they're actually able to spark farm down my katana. And unfortunately, we do end up losing that game. But GG's to the opponent. Very close game once again. Into the next game, we're going to see a Galarian wheezing. I swap out immediately. Immediately, I have no idea why they swapped out of that matchup. That is so positive for them. But I guess maybe they're running like Brutal Swing and Overheat and figured that the charge moves would all be resisted. But actually, in that matchup, you might see it in a later battle. They can just fully Fairy Wind farm down my Sharpedo, which is so embarrassing. But anyways, I'm just going to fully sacrifice it at this point. It can't do an awful lot. They actually go for a bait with an Icy Wind there, which is huge for me. Because now they have to throw a second Icy Wind to take me out. We can come in with the Kartana and I will actually be able to go for a full Razor Leaf farm down. They're going to come back in with the wheezing. I'm not going to throw straight away. A leaf blade will not KO from this range. But I'm hoping by the time they make it to the next charge move, I will be able to take them out here. So I'm going to go for the leaf blade on the CMP tie. Leaf blade does this KO. It is resistant damage. It actually takes them out there. And they've got a whiskash in the pack. I don't think the opponent expected that to KO there. But I'm able to raise the leaf, farm down the whiskash. And somehow I take that game. So GG's to the opponent there, into the next game we see Lantern in the lead, so obviously going to say swap into my Shadow Cacturn, the opponent's going to stay in initially, swap into their Galarian Weezing, we're going to go straight for that Trailblaze, Trailblaze going to boost my attack, unfortunately I don't think it makes that much of a difference in terms of the sand attack damage here, but we're going to shield this anyways, the opponent's going to go for a Brutal Swing, which is resisted damage, this will just be another Brutal Swing, so I'm expecting I should be able to live this, but no, we, we don't live that, it takes us out, we don't flip switch advantage, and you're going to see that if we live that, flip switch the opponent's gonna have a trevenant in the back so we could have just bite farmed them all the way down but at this point they can just come in with the lantern they're gonna get a full spark farm down before i even make it to a poison fang so i just concede the match there so ggs to that opponent there into next game we're gonna stay in this time because last time they swapped out straight away so i didn't want the same thing happening again but you're gonna see these fairy winds are well i mean obviously fairy wind is one of the lowest hitting fast moves in the game in terms of its damage but they fully farm me down there at this point, I'm hoping, oh, they're not going to blind throw the overheat straight away. But yes, they are. It one-shots the Cacturn. Now it's all up to my Kartana. What can we do here? I'm going to shield this up. They full send a second overheat. Even double debuff. That's still easily going to one-shot us. And unfortunately, they've got a Ferrothorn in the back. So not a lot we can do here unless I get a Night Sash boost and they shield the first move. But they don't shield and we don't get the boost. So just going to let this move go through. And you're going to see that the opponent's going to go for a resisted flash cannon. And it still one-shots the Kartana. That is how glassy this team is. But GG's to that opponent there. Into the next game, we see Wolverine in the lead. So once again, got resisted fast move damage. This isn't actually that bad for us. Although Weather Ball, sorry, not Weather Ball, Ice School Spear is still going to deal with some decent damage there. So I actually use my shield. They come in with a Ferrothorn. I'm going to respond with my Shadow Cacturn. I'm going to throw on the CMP Tire with a potential Flash Cannon. Dynamic Punch coming through. One shots the Ferrothorn. The opponent did not respect the damage there. And now let's see what the opponent wants to do. They're going to come back in with the Wall Rain. They're going to have to throw a Charge Move. And they do throw straight away. So I can let this move go through. Come in with my Kartana. I feel like I might be able to bite farm them down there, but of a Obviously, a Kartana will easily get the Razor Leaf farm down before they make it to the next charge move. And they've got a Trevenant in the back. So my Switch Lock is coming up. We can swap into Sharpedo, safely shield up the Seed Bomb here. And I will be able to fully bite farm them down. And I'm able to take out the Trevenant there and take that game. So GG's to that opponent there. Into the next game, we're going to see Shadow Sharpedo into Lantern once again. So once again, going to say swap into my Cacturn. The opponent responds with a Steel Wing Empoleon. I'm going to, for, going to go for a Trailblaze here, of course. This is going to be only neutral damage, but the opponent no shields. It still one-shots the Empoleon. That is absolutely insane there. It also said super effective for some reason, which I don't know why, because that is, of course, just neutral damage because of the Steel and Water typing. But I'm not going to complain. I'm now going to come in with my Sharpedo here. Of course, it 
can't really do an awful lot up against that lantern. So I'm just going to fully sacrifice it. The opponent full sends the Dazzling Gleam there. I kind of expected them to bait there, but it doesn't really matter. I can now shield this up. They won't make it to back-to-back -back weatherballs, and they're not going to make it to back-to-back -back charge moves on their lantern either. So I'm going to go for a full Razor Leaf farm down. The opponent makes a mistake here by throwing a charge move. That was not necessary. And you're going to see it's very close, but I'm able to Razor Leaf farm down the Alota Ninetales, and I'm able to take that game. So GG to the opponent there, into the next game, another Lantern in the lead. Honestly, didn't expect to see many Lantern, considering there are a lot of Grass Pokemon in this meta, but the opponent's going to respond with a Pelipper, and this is where Trailblaze doesn't really help us. Of course, we're going to boost our attack, but Sand Attacks are already double resisted. It's not going to do anything with a slight boost to that attack there. If I was running Grass Knot, that would deal more damage in this matchup, but... It is what it is. I'm just going to fully sacrifice the Sharpedo once again. The opponent full sends a Hurricane. We're going to come in with the Kartana. The opponent is going to come back in with the Lantern. I'm like, oh my god, are they running triple water here? Or are they just going to try and grab a shield from me? They go for the Surf, and they've got a Bomber Snow in the back anyway. So yeah, this is unfortunately game over. Nothing we can do here unless we get a boost with the Night Sash. But we don't. The opponent isn't even going to throw a Charge move here. They can just fully Powder Snow, farm me down. And unfortunately, we do lose that game. But GG's to the opponent there, into the next game, an amazing lead, we lead Sharpedo into a Confusion Slow King, and the opponent's going to say swap into Trevenant, and they're not even going to make it to a Seed Bomb, we get the full farm down, and they've got a Shadow Claw for Alligator in the back, so Sharpedo possibly could just fully sweep the entire team here, but I'm going to swap into my Kartana, get the Razor Leaf farm down, and the opponent's just going to concede the match there. So GG's to the opponent there, into the next game we see Sharpedo into Jump Bluff. Now this is even worse than Tropius because they can hit for super, super effective damage with either Bullet Seed, which they're running here, or the Fairy Wind damage as well. I'm just once again going to sacrifice a Sharpedo. I've got no clue what to, do, what to do here. Of course, we've got two Pokemon in the back that hit for either double resisted damage with Razor Leaf or triple resisted damage with Sand Attack. And they've also got a Fire Fang Marwa in the back, so... This is absolutely game over. Gonna let this move go through. Power Punch actually doesn't quite take us out there, which is quite surprising. But two Fire Fangs takes out the Kartana, and we just get absolutely destroyed in that battle. But GG's to that opponent there. Into next game, we see Trevenant in the lead. So great lead matchup for us. And the opponent's gonna swap into a Dugong. So I'm actually not gonna swap out here because I don't want to have to use a shield with my Kartana and then risk potentially getting farmed down by the Trevenant as well. The opponent's gonna over farm so much, throw so late, so I can just I can just very easily shield this up. They actually go for liquidation, which I'm not really sure about, but they're now gonna come in with Empoleon. I think they are still just slightly switch locked here. So gonna come in with my Kartana now. Gonna shield up the drill peg. I will be able to fully raise Ali, farm them down before they can swap out. They come back in with the Trevenant. We're gonna go for a Night Sash here, fishing for that boost. Night Sash does get the boost this time around, and I'm able to take out the Trevor in there with resisted Razor Leaf damage, and I'm able to take that game. So GG's to the opponent there, into the next game, awful lead into a Shadow Polyrath, so I say swap into my Kartana. We got a few Razor Leafs there, but we took way more damage from those counters. The opponent doesn't throw straight away, which I was surprised about, but it does make sense. They're not taking much damage at all, so they're going to farm to actually over 100 energy, which is obviously very unnecessary here. But Power Whip will be taking me out. We're going to come in with the Shadow Cacturn here, and they're going to farm to very close to 100 energy once again. They're going to go for the Flash Cannon. I thought about trying to go for a full farm down here, but we're just going to play it safe. Go for the Trailblaze. This will boost my attack. It will KO from this range, and the opponent's going to come in with a Alolan Ninetales. So I'm going to be able to go for another Trailblaze here. Possibly should have gone for Dynamic Punch here, but Trailblaze goes unshielded. It deals huge damage in this matchup. I have to just no-shield this. If I went for Dynamic Punch there, possibly could have dealt even more damage, but but it doesn't matter as the opponent's able to fully counter farm me down in like four, four or five counters there up against my Sharpedo and unfortunately we do lose that game but into the next game we're going to see the opponent once again swapping out of the matchup with Sharpedo with their Galarian Weezing and then swap into Dugong so I'm actually not going to swap out this time around go for a Poison Fang the opponent is going to throw here but they're not at back to back charge moves so happy to let Sharpedo go down and with the debuff to their defense two Razor Leafs easily KOs from that range so let's see what the opponent wants to do. They come back in with the Galarian Weezing. So I'm going to swap into my Shadow Cacturn. I'm not going to throw straight away here. Didn't want to throw on alignment. The opponent will be, a will, uh, will be able to bait with a Brutal Swing. We're going to go for a Trailblaze here, which is resisted damage. But once again, going to boost my attack. These Sand Attacks might be dealing more damage. I'm actually not 
100% sure. They come in with a Spark Lantern, and this is quite embarrassing. I tried to farm to back-to-back -back charge moves, but we're not going to get there before they Spark Farm me down. And now I've got a huge call here. Are they going to full send a Hove an Overheat? I'm going to call that they're not, and it's just a Brutal Swing, which we do just barely live. And now we can go for one shield, go for the Razor Leaf Farm down, take out the Weezing, and I'm able to take that game. So that's going to be it for today's video. If you did enjoy it, please make sure you leave a like, leave a comment letting me know. And as well, don't forget to respond to the question of the day if you haven't done so already. And if you want to see more content like this in the future, make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on post notifications. That way you'll be notified whenever I upload a new video. And if you want to take your support even further, you can now become a channel member with perks including early access to new videos, shout outs at the end of each video, custom loyalty badges and custom emojis to use in the comments. I want to say a massive thank you to everyone that has already become a channel member your support is greatly appreciated and with that being said thank you all so much for watching today's video and i hope you have a great rest of your day